Hey, this is Joe with Grow a Building. Today I'm going to tell you how to determine how much clay, silt, and sand you have in your soil. So if you're watching this, you probably have some kind of an idea or indication as to what kind of soil you have, whether or not it's draining well or it's extra sticky or it changes versus depth. Um, and what I'm going to show you today is a step-by-step -step process um, to determine the exact percentages of how much sand, silt, and clay you have in your soil. And I'll also talk about uh, ways to improve it. Um, this method works really well. It has a couple other steps than uh, what you may have seen previously out there. Um, but uh, I also want to mention that uh, if you are having any kind of drainage issues or suspect it, you may want to conduct the drainage test at the same time. I have a video on that. I'll put a card in the top right. But these two tests go hand in hand because if your soil drains at different rates versus depth, you can test them right at the same time you're doing both tests. So let's get into it. Okay, so for materials required, the first thing you're going to need is some kind of a shovel or a spade of some sort. Uh, you're going to need a couple of buckets for this test. Um, you know, a five-gallon one's good, and then another one that's, you know, decent sized. A common kitchen strainer, and uh, if it can fit in your bucket, so much the better. We'll see why in a minute. You'll need a jar with vertical walls. Um, mason jars or canyon jars are commonly used for good reason. Um, also, we're going to need some kind of powdered dishwashing detergent that you use in the dishwasher. You could probably use dish soap in a pinch, but um, I've seen universities recommend that this is just better at separating out the uh, clay and silt particles. And then finally, you're going to need a tape measure or ruler and a marker. And if your tape measure has metric on it, so much the better. Okay, so step one, we are going to get our soil sample. So you're going to want to dig down, um, you know, a decent cross section, at least six inches or so. And... Uh, and again, if you're doing the soil drainage test at the same time, you may want to go more or separate samples, whatever. But anyways, mix up your soil sample very well and try to break up and identify if there's any major rocks or organic matter you can remove. The next step um, is going to be to actually put some of that soil through a strainer. Now, don't be afraid. You don't need to do all your soil, just enough for filling a jar halfway or so. Um, this may seem like overkill to separate out the... Uh, uh, rocks and really break up any compacted particles, but I can assure you it's well worth your time. It really doesn't take long, maybe 10-15 minutes, but uh, when I haven't done this in the past, uh, when I'm dealing with compacted soil, it can impact the results. So on the left here is a sample that was put through a strainer and there's like no air gaps. It, it's perfectly, uh, there's a perfect gradient. On the one on the right, you can see those gaps there indicating some kind of compaction. Um, and this one also had some little balls of clay like below the letter S right there. You see the light color and down at the bottom below M. That's clay. That shouldn't be there. That should be at the top. So um, it's just a good idea. It helps you find any other rocks or anything to pull out. And it just gets you a very nice product at the end. Um, okay, so the next step is going to be filling our jars. Now, all you have to do for this is to fill your jar like roughly a third to halfway. You don't need to go more than that. Um, depending on your jar size, you want to go two to three inches, so 50 millimeters, 75 millimeters, something like that. Um, but, uh, and, you know, again, the, the sifted soil really makes this easy to do. Um, now, after that, it's going to get easier. All we have to do is fill our jars with water um, near the top, not all the way, maybe about 75, 80 percent. And uh, that way, you, when you shake it up, it has some room to actually mix. And you're also going to add a big scoop, like a tablespoon worth of the powdered dishwasher detergent at this time. And this really does help um, separate out the particles from one another once we shake it up. Um, and, and that's exactly what our next step is going to be, is to shake them vigorously. You want to do this for about a minute for um, a jar. And, you know, the more effort you put into it, the better it's going to be. Okay, so now we're just going to set it down and start letting it settle out. And at 60 seconds, we'll just take our marker and mark the sand layer. Two hours, you'll mark the silt layer. And then roughly like two days later, um, you can mark the clay layer. It could take more than two days for the clay to settle out. I've had it take about three or four days before. Um, and I want to point out, you know, when you guys actually go to do this test for real, after watching this, if you just want a quick reference, Google Grow It, Build It, uh, Mason Jar Soil Test, and you'll get to our article that has all this information in a list form. So it's easy to reference. But um, it's kind of fun doing this test, though, because the sand really does settle out, like, immediately. Like, I just set this jar down after shaking it. So at 60 seconds, though, you're going to mark two layers, and you can see where 
the sand is, and then above it's like a uniform milky substance. And then two hours later we come back, now we have a new layer to mark, um, and that's going to be the uh, silt layers. And then um, anyways, when we come back after a couple days, we've marked, I've already marked the clay layers, which, you know, the jar on the right had almost no clay. The one on the left had a thin layer. Um, what's interesting about these two samples is the one on the left, you can see it has very coarse sand at the bottom, then a thin layer of silt, and then a thinner layer of clay. That's from the vegetable garden. And it's also darker color, indicating some organic matter in the water. The jar on the right is about 10 feet away in my lawn. It has very fine sand and then a bunch of silt and almost no clay. It's just, it's kind of interesting in how that uh, plays out. Um, it's kind of fun to take multiple samples is all I'm saying. But okay, now we are going to go calculate our results. So to do this, I'm going to go in detail on this. Uh, so bear with me here. But we're just going to be measuring the height um, from the bottom of the jar to each of our marks. So I had 43 millimeters of sand, 63 millimeters silt, 68 millimeters clay. So that's the total height. Like the clay is the total height of everything, my sample. Um, so to calculate the percentage of sand, we just need to take the height of the sand, 43 divided by 68, which is the total height, the height of the clay. We get 63.2%. To do this for the silt, we need to take the height of the silt minus the height of the sand. So 63 minus 43 is 20, divided by the overall height of 68 millimeters gives you 29.4%. And finally, to do the clay, we take the height of the clay, divided by the height of the silt, divided by the overall 68 millimeters, and we get 7.4%. Okay, so now we've got our percentages, give or take a, you know, a rounding error here or there. What do we do with them? Well, we can go to the USDA's uh, Soil Pyramid website, which I'll have a link to below, as well as in the article I referenced. And you put in the uh, percentage of sand and the percentage of clay, and it will put on their little pyramid exactly where you fall. So this sample I just entered in here is sandy loam, which is, uh, you know, it's better than I thought it would be. Um, or I expected to have a clay soil because it didn't drain well. And turns out I just have a compacted sandy loam. All right, so what do you do if you are in a bad zone? Well, if you're in like a real sandy area, you just need to amend with compost um, locally or over the whole thing. But if you're in a clay area, you want to do compost again. But um, if you're in like a flat garden, you're going to want to top dress the whole thing um, uniformly as best you can. Because if you just do it where you dig your holes, you could create a little bowl effect um, that'll hold water. And, you know, all the surrounding soil doesn't drain because um, it's you know 70 percent clay um well if you just make a spot that drains well it, it might just turn into like a little vessel to hold water um so just be aware of that now i'm on a slope so it doesn't matter as much which you'd know that if you watch my drainage video but then also uh i am doing the entire top layer of my vegetable garden you can see i have two or three inches of organic matter on top and by the way i created that in a single year um but uh, anyways, if you're new to this or haven't started composting yet, I have a very good video on how to get started on that. It's the most simple bare bones way to give you a starting point. Um, and uh, it explains everything and builds a pile and all that. But um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. This is a little part of a series of videos, a playlist that will be linked uh, below eventually here on vegetable gardening for like a suburban backyard. Um, it's how to improve your soil. Um, what you can do to test your soil, how to build a garden. I mean, my wife and I, we're not homesteaders. We just turned our suburban backyard into a productive little garden, you know, that was originally devoid of organic matter. But again, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments. I'll try to answer them. And I hope you guys have found this useful and give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thank you.